Welcome back for the round two wrap up of the Brew Bowl. It's been an interesting second round with our first player versus player match and uh, our first NPC versus NPC match as well, which I managed to complete with the help of my son. So let's go over to that first, talk about the the one game you haven't seen, which was the, uh, the Fort Lauren Forest Drakes versus the Talabaklan Griffins. Uh, so in this case, my son and I worked this one out. Uh, started off with the Drakes winning the toss and deciding to receive in the first turn. Uh, now, they managed to run in a couple of uh, touchdowns in the first half. So the catcher, first off, managed to break through the uh, nobility line and, and score in turn three. Uh, and then, unfortunately, the nobility thrower managed to fumble the ball uh, a couple of times in the backfield. Uh, and they managed to sink through again, pick up the ball and go and score again in turn six of the, uh, the second half. Although the second score led to a change in the weather which became sweltering heat. Uh, so initially the uh, the Griffins managed to get a good cage together and they actually scored in the second turn of the second half, managing to push their uh, uh, one of their blitzes through Guns of Jost uh, to score in the second turn. But then uh, the Wood Elves struggled to play defense at that point onwards because, uh, because of sweltering heat, each side loses D3 players at the start of each new drive, basically just too hot to play. The Wood Elves lost three. The, um, uh, the Nobility lost one. So that gave the Wood Elves a, a significant uh, numbers disadvantage. And you can actually see there in this picture that that was what the, uh, the injury and KO bench looked like for the Wood Elves, uh, which included uh, number four, Vokay, who was actually a two touchdown scorer in the first round. Managing to, he, he tried to run for a um, uh, for a third touchdown in, in literally uh, very close to the end of the, oh, actually no, it was, it was the last turn of the game, number 12. Uh, he had to dodge three times, three or two three plus dodges, a two plus dodge, uh, and then a two plus go for it to be able to score. On the second three plus dodge, he fell and killed himself. So no kill score for the other team because it was a, a self kill. Uh, but one of the Woodall players did die here. Uh, also, before he died, he managed to seriously injure uh, Gunther Joss, the, the blitzer for the Griffins, taking him out for not only this game, but for the next game as well. So another win for the Drakes, although not as easy as their first round win, uh, taking the game 2-1 against the Griffins. So let's look at where that now puts us in terms of the, um, uh, the leaderboard. So we now have... The Drake's sitting comfortably on top with six points and a plus four differential. Uh, the Blackhawks, with a, a win and a draw now, uh, go to four points, putting them in, in a comfortable second place. Uh, and then we have a tie right now for third place between the Raiders, the slow ticket uh, pantry Raiders of the Halflings, and the High Peaks Mountaineers, the Ogres. Uh, so both on three points, both with the same differential. I tend to list them here by current team value, just to give an order, but they are still technically uh, in equal third place. Then uh, the Yarls and the Hammers once again come in equal fifth place, but both with two draws, and obviously with draws, there's no differential. Uh, and then we've got the Slavers in number seven with one draw, one loss, a single league point there. And the Griffins, uh, who are yet to get a win, are on the bottom of the table with no league points uh, and a minus three differential. So a bit of work there to do for the Imperial Nobility. Let's take a look at the teams directly. The Black Iron Slavers. So uh, they uh, drew their game against the Hammers, uh, giving them a uh, no change to fan factor, but they did manage to get Frenzy onto Nitro, their other uh, their other Bull Centaur. So they've now got one with Kick, one with Frenzy. Uh, left them with a bit, bit of money still, but uh, no need to spend it right now. So uh, uh, AP decided not to take an extra lineman for, um, for a bench. So I think he's going to save, his bit of, save a bit of money, maybe pick up some Chaos to Wolf blockers down the track as well, on, or maybe something else. Going on to the Ironhold Hammers, which is Big Spoon's team. Uh, so first off, uh, Rain Lewison uh, was the was the star player here, picking up Mighty Blow plus one, which is what Spoon really wanted, so um, good for him. Uh, he also had a bit of money left over. He was well over the 100,000 mark to look at the risk of expensive mistakes. So he decided to spend a bit of money and uh, buy two cheerleaders as well for his team getting him down below the 100. Uh, so his team is fully fit, ready to go into the next game with two coaches, two cheerleaders, and still 65K in the treasury. 
Now, the High Peaks Mountaineers, the Ogres team, that was not a, a, a great game for Loss, unfortunately. First off, one of his Ogres, Crack Rag, Dust Striker, dying in the game um, right towards the end. Also, one of his Lyman Don Granite Teeth got seriously injured, missing the next game. Uh, so what he has done is he has picked up a uh, he's picked up guard on his one of his ogre blockers, and then also he purchased a uh, a new lineman, which was uh, another another nobler. Now those of you who pay attention might have noticed in that game that he actually rolled the result where he couldn't hire new players. I've decided to mix up the rules a bit. This is really still a playtest document, the Power by the Pockets rules. So I have said that I will still allow players to. Or for for the the, play, the PCs to recruit new players for their teams, even if they roll poorly on the management roll, uh, and that that player will just turn up one game later. So this this extra novel lineman will actually turn up after the next game, not at the next game, and that's just to make sure players still have a way to spend their money so they don't get caught out too much with expensive mistakes. They can spend it. They just got to wait an extra game for the player to turn up if they made if they roll badly on the management roll. Death River Reavers, our Blackhawk team. Uh, so this was a such a close game. It was it was almost a solid win initially for uh, uh, Flohammer. Then I managed to pull up a hail mary pass uh, to uh, from the from the Valkyrie to the uh, to the Ulfunar to uh, bring it to uh, a one all score. Uh, and I actually had an opportunity. I got, I, I could have run the ball in with the Valkyrie if. Uh, Flohammer hadn't made a couple of really lucky rolls to get one of his characters away to, to knock her down. So, yeah, a game that really could have gone either way many times through. And unfortunately for Flohammer, his number one team captain, so to speak, one of his original skill gainers, got drafted into the NAF to go play full-on Blood Bowl uh, after this round. So he will no longer be available. And uh, he has therefore used his money to buy a new uh, Blackhawk blocker, Derlag Dwarf Splitter. So according to Flohammer, the names of the blockers previously, Smasher, Basher, Gasher, and Crasher, along with the knobs, along with the um, the goblins, Knob, Bob, Hob, and Zob, uh, were names given by the team coach or the team owner because he didn't want to have to remember what their actual names were, but it's decided with this new player, I'm going to actually learn his actual orc name and remember it. So his actual name is Derlag, Dwarf Splitter. Uh, so this is why he has five positional showing here because Smasher is now removed from the team uh, and you'll see that reflected in next week's update as well, that he'll have four blockers with Smasher gone. Uh, and also Zob, one of his uh, goblins, will miss the next game too from a serious injury. And Nob, who was really the, the man of the match in the first game, except Smasher took the cake and then left with it. Uh, he also got man of the match for this for this game and picked up the defensive skill. Not necessarily a great skill unless there's some people to get guard, but uh, that's the way it is sometimes with sevens. Sometimes you get skills that aren't that exciting. All right, let's look at the NPC teams. The Slow Thicket Pantry Raiders first off. Uh, so they lost their game against the Ogres. Um, Theo Greenside took a random secondary skill. Now, during the show, I went for a passing skill and he got Cloudburster, and then I checked the book and realized that Halfling can't actually get passing skills even as secondary. So I therefore changed that to a general skill. Same number on the chart as Cloudburster. Gave me Dirty Player plus one for Theo Greenside. Um, no other major changes to the uh, to the halfling team here. Just saving some money. They've got a bench. Um, they've got everything they need right now. So I think we'll just see how they go in the next game as to what they look at spending their money on next. Lauren Forest Drakes are our current table leaders with with two wins. Uh, yeah, not a great game. They lost Vokai, one of their uh, multi touchdown scorers from the previous game, uh, and also Gazekith, one of their linemen. Ended up seriously injured. So that means that uh, they'll be going into the next match uh, a player down. And with uh, I, I was able to use Treasury to buy another War Dancer. I, I agonized over a second War Dancer or a Treeman, but decided to go with the second War Dancer. Uh, but with only six players, they will go into the next match. One player down had to bring in a, uh, a Journeyman as well before they can afford to buy more. But they are now at, at uh, Dedicated Fans 3. They do have the two War Dancers, the Thrower and the Catcher. One of the war dancers uh, was the man of the match, picking up diving tackle. Great, uh, great option there to stop some of these. Well, they are really the only um, dash team. Although I suppose there are some some goblins and noblars and halflings in the league, but uh, yeah, diving tackle should hopefully come in useful. Uh, but yeah, this team needs to rebuild after losing uh, one of their players and uh, having one set the next game as well. So 
moving on to the Icehorn Peak Yarls, our Norse team. Uh, so they came out with the draw against the Blackhawks. Um, Ray Norlison, their Ulfunar, picked up Mighty Blow at Ranley, which is a, a great result for an Ulfunar, uh, who strength four will be knocking people down at the time. Mighty Blow plus one means dealing the extra damage. Uh, they also had enough money left over that I decided to buy a extra lineman for them to give them a bench. So they've now got Hogni Tosterson as, a, as an extra uh, lineman. So otherwise, no major changes there for the Jarls. And finally, the Talabaklin Griffins... Uh, lost their second match. They are the only uh, unvictorious team so far. Gunther Joss, despite clearly being the man of the match uh, with the with the score there, uh, who picked up Leap, was also seriously injured, so we'll miss the next game, uh, which took them down to below seven players, and they had some left of money, so I decided to go and recruit a extra lineman. So that'll give them the full seven players for the next round, uh, and will mean that they have a bench once uh, Joss is back from his injury. So we'll take a quick look at the uh, current play leaderboard. Finally, we have a, a single pass. Only took two full rounds to get a, a single completed pass, but uh, Gerd Arno Dodder from the Jarls got a single, a, a fantastic pass, a pass that saved the game for them, uh, being caught by an Ulfana, um, which which put her on the chart as the number one pass with one completed pass. Uh, we've got a few multi-scorers now, so you'll see there that uh, we now have Midi, the... Uh, Wood Elf Catcher has gone to three touchdowns overall. Uh, and then we've got three players, um, Barry Sanderson, Nob, and Voke on two. Now, Voke is shown red here because he's dead. So he will never score anymore, um, but he is still you know, a high scorer despite his death. But eventually, I imagine other players will, will get above him and, and knock him off down the bottom there. Uh, uh, no interceptions so far. Most deadly, we've got two players, uh, both with two casualties, both the Treeman in this case. And then a whole swathe of uh, players on one uh, one casualty. Once again, most valuable, which is really the player we give the skill to. I expect it'll be a while before we'll see anything other than a lot of tying here because people will try to spread the skills around to avoid the chance of players being drafted away. Unless uh, one of the players does have an option in their playbook to pick a player and reduce the chance, they will be, well, actually eliminate the chance they'll be, they'll be um, taken away. And I think another player has a, something that move in their playbook which lets them then reduce the chance that players are pulled away. So we might see some more MVPs moving up the ranks going forward. Uh, and then no major change in the most expensive players. We've still got those um, couple of uh, uh, ogres at the top there. Even though I've left Voke on here as a scorer, um, despite being dead, I have removed the ogre which died uh, from the Mountaineers from the most expensive list because he's no longer drawing a wage. So effectively, this just shows our, our highest paid players, which of course is three big guys, followed by a couple of, um, of well, still semi-big guys in the form of the Chaos Dwarf uh, Blitzes. So that, that's our play leaderboard. So let's look at, uh, at round three action for next, next week. So uh, this is the one where it is player versus player and player versus player. So you're already going to see two games on YouTube. You're going to see the uh, Chaos Dwarf Black Iron Slavers, take on the Ogre team, the High, Mount, High Peaks Mountaineers. So that will be AP versus Lawson. Uh, and then you're going to see the Death River Reavers, the Blackhawk team, take on the Arnold Hammers, which are a Dwarf team, which will be Fauxhammer versus Big Spoon. Uh, so both should be great matches. But I think we had a, a great time, uh, AP and Spoon, playing against each other this week. So I'm looking forward to seeing these games, two sets of games against... Uh, and this will be the only round where... where players only play each other there will there will always be an npc team in every round going forward but there will also be two npc games so the griffins are taking on the raiders and the drakes are taking on the yarls once again i will work through those games still using tts uh with my son we're not going to record it though uh and i will give you the results of that game or those games in the same way i did today uh and that'll be the next round so expect two games this week but then next week, we'll be back to, I think, three games. I think the week after that will be four games again, because once again, every player will be playing uh, an NPC team. And in fact, next round will be special, because next round has the uh, the star players in each team. So I've got my notes here, but memory, the Slavers will get Hackflem Scuttlespite. The Ogres are getting the Mighty Zug. The Reavers are getting Ripper Bolgrot. The uh, Hammerers are getting... Uh, 
Griff, not Griff. Uh, well, there, there's the uh, the dwarf troll slayer. I, I can't remember his name. Um, the Griffins have got Thorson, or uh, the the Norse, uh, the guy that throws kegs. I can't remember his name now. Thorson something. The Raiders have got Carla von Kill. The Drakes have Eladril, whatever his name, the the, the sort of war dancer character, and the Yarls have. Um, who did they get? They got um. You know what? I have got to cover it in the next uh, next weekly wrap up when I talk about how those players actually did. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's the it, it should be a fun round with the with the star players in there, uh, and then round five, yeah, round five, which is the next round when it's all players versus NPCs. I've got another little gimmick we're going to put in there as well. So, um, hopefully, you know, if you're here for like raw blood bowl, as I said, this is not. The show for you uh you know this is not all about uh you know the best way to play and the you know the the, the most accurate way to play or not it's accurate still i should say but it's not we are not expert players we're having fun here we're telling a story hopefully you're following the story uh but yeah if you want to see some some really good competitive blood bowl look at channels like bonehead podcasts uh but for this this is just a, a fun exercise we're doing hope you enjoy it hope you keep enjoying it and I hope that you will join us again next week for our next set of videos. So thanks very much and take care.